Good morning, preppers. Listen, if you're a prepper, then you've actually at least considered getting some type of solar generator. Maybe you even own one. And we actually have a few and we'll be modeling more as time goes on. For example, we have this little one here called a Snugmax, which they don't even make anymore. It's similar to like a, a 350 watt Jackery. Nice little unit, it's nice and compact. I like it for like on the go for my laptop or something. Step up, this is an Okmo. This one's a thousand watts. And of course the price goes up for this one too. Of course it has a lot more power and lasts longer depending on your devices. And of course on the channel we've modeled our four Patriots which is even a bigger step up, an all-inclusive one including the panels and everything. But again, we'll show you even more as time goes on. But the question might be, should I buy some type of solar generator? Or should I, well, can I make one on my own? Because I'm all about thriftiness and I'm also about using my noggin to try to figure things out, making things. It's just, it's fun. I like doing this kind of stuff. But maybe you've actually thought of the same thing yourself. Could I make something? The answer to your question is, yeah, you can make a comparable one. And that's what I'm gonna to try to do is look at the numbers and actually see how it compares, for example, using this system I made compared to like, for example, this Okmo right here. All right, start off with, we have a battery. Inside your uh, solar generator, more than likely, is a lithium ion battery. There are some different ones that are actually coming around now. And in our homemade one, we're actually looking at a, an RV or a deep cycle or marine battery. Now, don't think of this as a car battery if you didn't already know. And the differences are a car battery is meant to put out a whole bunch of power all at once to get that big old huge engine started. And then it can run some accessories. And once the engine started, then the alternator will keep the battery charged up. But it's not made for power over a long period of time. It's meant for a huge gust of power going out to start the engine. And that's why, even though it can actually start that huge engine, you leave your dome, on, dome light on overnight and it'll probably kill the battery, or at least has a good chance of it. They're not meant for draining down. They're not meant for long trickles of, of power. The deep cycle batteries, like again for your RV or boat, are made for that. They're made for like radio communications. And sure, they can start your engine and the engine can actually, uh, alternator can actually keep your battery charged, but it's meant to actually go down in power. Let's say you're boondocking in your RV overnight and the power goes down overnight as you run your fans, you runs your light, it runs everything. The next morning you get up and whatever you use to charge it back up, maybe you actually go into a campground or you have a solar panel, it'll charge it back up again. So it's made to have a long-term power outage and it can go quite low compared to a car battery. So even though this is a type of lead acid battery, that's why it always has the dangers on here, do not open this because it usually has sulfuric acid in there, not good stuff with your skin, okay? It's actually relatively comparable to a lithium ion battery. The lithium ion battery is better as far as a small sealed container battery and the way the charging and discharging, it's actually in a lot of ways more efficient, okay? But you know what? Price-wise is what we're gonna look at. If you go to Walmart, you know, I forgot exactly how much this battery cost. It's around $100, maybe $130. This one actually is the one for our travel trailer camper. And what we do is every fall, we bring it in the house, put on a charge during the winter, you know, a trickle charge or at least a charger that actually keeps it charged up. And that way come springtime, it's ready to go again instead of leaving it outside. I mean, honestly, the cold weather is not really gonna mess with it too much, but that's what we do is we bring them inside so it keeps it nice and charged up. So I'm gonna use our deep cycle battery here to construct our own solar generator. So I set it up so everything as far as this system I built, this side of it is geared toward putting a charge into your battery and getting your battery charged up. Then anything on this side is actually gonna be output powering your devices. So we have an input coming into the battery, then output going out. And what can we actually use to charge the battery? Of course, the first thing we're looking at is a solar panel. Now, a lot of these solar panels that you get in this type of system, you can get them, I got this at a camping store once for our RV, and it's not a very high powered one compared to some of the modern ones today. Some of the modern ones like this for like 100 bucks-ish, if you look around, you can get one 100 watt power. This one's like 20 watts, it's not much. But what it does is it actually has the power regulator and controller, we call it a charge controller, built into it so that we don't actually have to have a special charge controller. If you actually have a solar generator, they have a built-in charge controller, which is really nice because you can actually take a, just a regular solar panel without this gizmo and put the power right into it and it'll say, you know what, I'll take care of it myself. But in this situation for our homemade dealie, we actually have this panel, let's pretend it's 100 watts, coming in and even right now, even though there's no sunlight on here, you can see that's actually with that yellow light, there's actually some charge. It's not much, 
but it's actually enough. If you put it on a trickle, it will charge up your battery. So with this, we have this controller right here and I have my little alligator clips and all you have to do is don't touch the terminals together, put it right on here. Think there's one, there's the other. And now this solar panel is charging this battery. Okay, so the input, great. And of course, if you actually have more sophisticated solar panels, higher powered solar panels, you can actually charge the battery up faster, okay? Which is good. Now, right now it's charging it up, great. We'll talk about the output, what it does with it in a minute. Another way you can charge up your battery is simply with a, well, a car battery charger. Um, this is a NOCO Genius and it is genius and it is like fantastic. I love these. This is actually a higher amp one, five, five amps, which you can actually put out more amperage or current to charge your battery up faster. But they actually have some lower amperage ones for cheaper. But I bought this one, let's see, I got this for $90. Because here on the homestead, we're always charging, you name it. Not to mention, this actually has a six volt option too. And our antique rusty tractor is six volts. So it actually does a lot of stuff for us. But you know, just like this solar generator, you can actually take this and plug it in the wall. And then the actual electricity from your outlet will go in and charge it up. You can do the same thing with your homemade panel as well. So down here somewhere, we have a plug. We can plug it in. And if it was plugged in, instead of using the solar, we could simply put these alligator clips on there and off it goes charging it up. So when you have electricity, let's say you're actually where we're at, where our power can sometimes be intermittent. We'll actually have power. A few days later, it goes out for a few hours, comes back on. You know, a few days later, it goes out for two days. That's, that's actually a relatively common occurrence here. So when the days you do have power around, you can actually use the battery charger to charge up your deep cell battery. Or again, just hook up a solar panel to it and let it go through. This actually will tell you when it, the charge is complete, so it won't try to overcharge your battery. So we have, in this way, two powers coming in to power it up. Solar panel or plug into the wall. Solar generators often have a third means for doing that, and that's simply like plugging into like a cigarette lighter. And uh, I thought I had those little plugs here. I do, I put them back in the bag. Um, you can actually have a cigarette lighter that can actually plug it into, well, I guess they call them what? Car adapters now because they don't want people to smoke. So we have the car adapter, you plug that into your, your car adapter, your auxiliary jack on your car, your cigarette adapter, and plug it in here. And that way it's the third way you can actually charge this up. So like if you're driving down the road for these and you're gonna use it during the night when you sleep, you can actually keep it charged up while you drive by keeping it plugged in. And then after that, you can unplug it and use it through the night. You can do the same thing with this, the exact same thing. Um, I don't have one, but what you can do is you can actually get this kind of adapter that goes into little jacks like this. So you simply just put these on, then plug this into the adapter in your car and it'll charge this up for you. In addition to keeping your regular car battery charged as well. So three ways to charge it up, through that adapter, through a solar panel or, or through a charger. Now the output. And the output of course is what we're looking for. And the output I hear more times than that, in fact, that's almost all I ever hear is, hey, for the output, can this be enough to run my freezer? That's always the question. Sometimes the refrigerator too, but it's always the freezer. Can my freezer run off of this? Can my freezer run off of this? My, can my freezer run off of this? And the answer is always yes, by the way. Yes, your freezer can run off all of these. It's just a matter of how long. And that's what we're looking at as far as the different types of power. This one's like 350 watts, AKA not very long. I actually did the calculations by the way. Here's one of our chest freezers. We actually got this from a company called New Air and it's a very efficient chest freezer. I think it's 1.7 cubic feet, something like that. And this particular freezer runs on about 1.4 amps of power. Now this is not by any means a math class where we're gonna go through the numbers of understanding the different power wattage and stuff. I'm not, that's not important. But I did the calculations. This little Snug Max will run it for about eight hours. So that freezer, give or take about eight hours, depending on how often we open it, depending on if the stuff in there's already frozen, et cetera, because you know, the more you open it, the more raw stuff you put in or thaw, thawed stuff you put in there, um, the more power it's gonna to take to run the compressor but it's meant to sit there and not let the ice cold out or let the heat in is, is more appropriate. And so if you let it sit for a long time, it could actually go hours without running the compressor and therefore this little guy could actually run it more than eight hours conceivably. So eight hours. For the Okmo, in this particular one, this is a thousand watt solar generator. It can actually run it 
for about one and a half days. One and a half days. And again, it depends on how much you get in there. You know, it may be enough for simply just to hook it up because by tomorrow your freezer died, you can go out and buy another freezer and save all your food in there. You know, that's something obviously we think about, but about one and a half days. Now with a battery, again, it runs on numbers we don't have to worry about. It actually has 122 uh, amp hours to basically power your gear. And of course, if a lot of your gear is already 12 volts, you're good to go because this battery is 12 volts. Because whenever you convert that 12 volts into something else, let's say you convert it into 120 volts, you're going to have power that's lost. Power that's lost. By the way, even with these particular ones, they estimate that even though this is 1,000 watts, you're only looking at usually 85% max usage, so you're only gonna actually gonna get 850 watts out of it. That's what they estimate, by the way. But for this, as soon as you take this and convert this into a different voltage, like a 120 volt outlet, such as this inverter right here, you're guaranteed to lose about 10% of your power right off the bat. So now having this inverter is gold because all you do is run a couple wires, depending on what your power use is gonna be used, get the manual for this, it'll tell you what gauge wire to hook up to it. And I'll pull this around and ready. Boom. We have outlets running. Now this particular inverter is a thousand watts of power continuous. Now, I don't know if you know, but when you actually start something up, let's say your, your freezer turns on and it's a thousand watt freezer. That's a pretty hefty freezer, by the way. And you have a thousand watt freezer. It's actually going to go up to like 1200 to 1300 watts momentarily, then come back down to a thousand again and stay steady there. So what you'll often see is this is a thousand watt, 2000 watt inverter. In other words, it'll put out a thousand watt continuous, but it can actually handle those spikes up to 2000 watts. But either way, it's a thousand watt inverter and off this thing can go. And I can literally, right now if I wanted to, take my freezer, plug it into this, turn it on, and now this battery will be running my freezer. Just like this Okmo or my Four Patriots one will, or my Snug Max will for a short amount of time, okay? Now, as it's working, I could, let me find the cords again, I could hook up the solar to it, and, ready? Now I'm outside and I'm, I'm camping or whatever the case may be, and I hook it up, ah, now my solar is charging up this battery as the battery also is being used here. So some solar generators will allow you to do this too. The Oakmo will, the Four Patriots will. You can actually power devices at the same time you have a solar panel plugged into it. But the keyword is some. This Snug Max won't do that. You can either charge it or you can use it. It's, you can't do them simultaneously. So if you ever do buy a solar generator, make sure you find one that you can actually do it simultaneously. It's gonna save you a lot of headache. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about numbers. Oh, by the way, I did the calculations for this, and even though it's not exact, it's also about one and a half days to power my freezer. So comparability, these two are extremely similar, extremely, extremely close. This one, I think will actually go a little bit longer. Um, I didn't write it on here. I think if I remember when I did the calculations, it was like 1.8 days, this is 1.6 days. But let's go ahead and just pretend they're exactly the same. They'll both run the freezer for about a day and a half. Which one is advantageous to buy, to purchase? Well, this is nice because it's all in one. It's all right there for you. And you can simply just plug things in and take it out and it has all the jacks on there for you. This is convenient, especially with these carry handles, so nice. If you're gonna be carrying an inverter and a battery and a solar panel and stuff, it really gets cumbersome. But let's look at the price. This Okmo, without the solar panels, mind you, this 1,000 watt Okmo runs about $600. $600, which you know what? For a lot of people, $600 is a lot of money to pay for it. It's a lot of money for having something to go, go, make your freezer go for a day and a half. It's a lot of money. When we talk about this whole system, we're looking at 100 to 130 for the battery. We're looking at about 100 bucks for the uh, solar panel. The inverter, you can get them as inexpensive as $75. You can actually get the USB adapter, so you can hook that on here too and actually run extra USBs. Um, you can actually buy included $90 for the car charger to get it going. So we're looking at, it'd be nice if I calculate this ahead of time, one, two, three, four, I would say $450. So you can buy it all in one unit for 600 without the solar panels or with an inexpensive panel, you can get this whole system right here for 450. So this does work in a lot of ways, 
better than this for the fact that you can actually do what you want to with this and actually make it work better. Like here's a great example. Let's say you let's say, well, do I want to pick 600, 600 of this or 450 in this? How about this? How about you spend that extra 100 or 130 and you buy a second battery? How about that? So in that case, while one battery is actually going through the inverter and powering your freezer, you can actually have the other battery on charge or charged ahead of time using one of these chargers or a solar panel hooked up to it. And hopefully, if you actually have enough power coming in, you can swap them out each day. So the first day you use one deep cell battery. And then while you're doing that, you're charging up your second one. Then the next day you switch them, you're charging up your second, your first one while you're using your second one. Or in that price, you could almost even buy three of these and actually have a three-way three three rotation. So overall, doing this method where you, you can actually piecemeal it together is cheaper, but it's just ugly. There's just stuff everywhere. And by the way, I was going to show this one too. Here's a little tiny one. This is a 350 watt little one that can actually plug in your, your adapter on your car too, or you can actually hook wires up to it. This works exactly the same as this one. This one's a thousand watts. This is only 350. This is 350. So that's another option too, is if you don't need a whole lot, for example, maybe you just need to power like a CPAP machine to stay alive. That's always a plus is to stay alive. You might want to actually just scale things down and just buy one of these because this can actually work better. And by the way, buying all this stuff, except for the Snug Max, which no longer exists in nature, I'm going to put, and this is from Walmart too, besides that, I'm going to put links for all these things in case you want to consider buying it. But here's the beauty of it, and here's the whole point. Maybe you already have one of the th these things in your house. Maybe you already have a camper and you already have the battery. You're already one step into it. Maybe at that point, you just need to pick up an inverter. Maybe pick up a, a charger or maybe a solar panel. Maybe you already have a solar panel with eclipse on it. Maybe you just need to pick up the battery and the inverter. So it's nice because when you piecemeal it, thrifty is the key. You're, you may already be on your way there. In fact, your camper probably already has an inverter. And that's why this battery sits outside and you actually have electrical outlets on the inside and the outlets work with your battery. Some campers can't do that, but some you can. So much more expensive buying it this way. And the really big units like the Ford Patriots gets very expensive because they make it so everything is included, including the panels. The Okomo is nice because it can actually run um, other panels too on it. So $600 for this, $450 for all this, but this does take a little bit of understanding of how to, oh my gosh, do this. There's just like a lot of stuff here. Again, I like that kind of stuff. It's fun for me. But you know, if you're actually trying to set up some kind of base station at your house that you're not going to carry around, it wouldn't be hard to simply have it. So maybe in your, your mud room or something, you actually have a place for a couple batteries. That's where your inverter is sitting. And uh, you know that when the power goes out, you can just run an extension cord there. Maybe already in your mud room, you already have the freezer there. So you just unplug it from the wall and plug it into this system you set up. That way you don't have to, once you get this, get this set up, it's going to make life much easier. Not to mention you can actually take the batteries and combine them together to make a bigger battery bank. That's what solar systems are all about. And that way it's actually much more dependable for a longer period of time. Which I'm not against by any means making a video about that in the future too. Even giving you the math numbers, which I know a lot of people are like, math, I don't want to deal with that. But I like doing the math. And when you do the math when it comes to voltage and current with amperage and power the math is actually pretty pretty self-explanatory almost it's pretty simple okay so i hope this helps you you'll see links below for all these different devices that you can actually add on to it and make your own system as well as as well as the okmo and the four patriots as well in case you still want to pick one of those up too but again i will show you more solar generator solar generator stuff coming in the future i hope you enjoyed this and it's been helpful to you thanks for watching